Weather. Your secret weapon for demand forecasting. How often do you check the weather and why? Probably not a surprise why we all care about the weather as it affects what you eat, what you buy and where you go. It affects how you feel and thus drives human behaviour and that in turn affects businesses. So I could easily list out various scenarios but I thought it might be a good idea to actually show this in practice by using Tableau to perform some on the fly analysis in order to solve the business problem. So let's enter the fictional world of Hana Sushi Hub. It's located near the University of Sydney and its sushi rolls are very popular with its uni students. Now the hub currently offers 15 different types of rolls, each classified under four categories, cold, fried, hearty and spicy. But due to management's new initiative in cost reduction and curbing diseconomies of scale, they've decided to reduce that product mix to just 10 sushi rolls or rather 10 varieties of sushi rolls. Now the big question is which roll should form part of the product mix. They brought in a Tableau consultant to help solve that problem. And I'm obviously that consultant and I am hypothesizing that weather could be an influencer. So my aim is to use historical weather and sushi transactional sales data to discover if weather affects the type of sushi rolls people gravitate towards on particular days. And then those findings will then allow me to pick the 10 varieties based on a two week weather forecast. Okay, so I've now got Tableau launched. Let's take a minute first to familiarize ourselves with the data set. The data set I'm using today is a blend of our transactional sushi sales combined with historical weather data for the last 90 days contains fields such as sushi roll, type, which is going to be our theme for the day, We've got a date field and several weather indexes or other indices such as dew point, feels like temperature, heat index, etc. So what I like to do first is take a look at how my sales are trending by type over time. So I'm just going to double click on this measure, bring out my date field. And then partition it by sushi type by dragging this into color. It's looking a little bit cluttered, so I might place my type onto rows. This isn't really telling me much at the moment as I'm better off knowing what's the percentage of total of each of the sushi types sold per day. So I'm going to turn this into a table calculation and select percent of total. Okay. So at the moment, this table calculation is running across all my 90 days. But I want to force it to, I guess, to force the percent of total to start each day. So instead of running table across, I'm wanting it to run table down. So I might just change the direction of it. So far, we've performed this analysis through a sales lens. But we're going to add an additional lens by incorporating the weather data into our analysis. So let's take a look at the weather metrics first. And just to re reiterate, these measures are available as part of our historical weather data source. Okay, so I've got my dew point temperature. For those who are not familiar with what that means, it's the definition is basically the temperature at which the air can no longer hold all of the water vapor which is mixed with it. Although it's basically um, a good indication of how humid and sticky it feels and it's actually a better indication, it's a better indicator of humidity than relative humidity. And now I'm also going to bring in my temperature 
And I also want to see what's the difference between my temperature and feels like temperature. Okay, so they're quite similar because the feels like temperature is a better indication, is a better driver of behavior. I'm going to use this and get rid of temperature to avoid duplication. Okay, and the heat index is basically exactly the same as the feels like. So again, I'm going to remove that from pressure. Don't really care about pressure because it's quite consistent anyway. And finally, the UV index, which is consistently zero. So again, I'm going to remove that. And now I have my temperature and humidity indicators, which I will use for my analysis. Okay, so now I want to see the relationship between my humidity and temperature. Okay, and I'm going to disaggregate this by day, just so I have an individual dot point for each of my 90 days. And let's just do a check to see that they add up to 90. Yes. Okay. And what I might also do is to prevent this scatter plot from being all squashed up by unticking the include zero. Okay. The next step would be to come up with some sort of a, a visual differentiator between each of these days. And I'm going to do that by using a calculated field. Okay. I've basically specified, specified the conditions. So I've basically specified the conditions that need to be met for a day to be classified as cold and sticky, cold and comfortable, hot but comfortable, mild and sticky, and mild and comfortable. Okay, so these figures I did not just come up with randomly. It's actually been scientifically proven that dew point temperatures of below, of above 18.33 degrees Celsius, that's the point at which it starts to feel humid and sticky and temperatures of below 23.35 degrees Celsius, that's when it starts to feel less warm. Okay, so just ignore the cold here. Um, I've just named it cold for simplicity. So as, an, as a visual differentiator, I'm going to drop this calculated field into colour. I might also add a reference line. To show the change in humidity. And I'll do the same for temperature. Okay. The aim now is to try to identify whether the sales are skewed towards certain sushi types based on the weather profiles I've just created. And I'm going to do it via this method. Okay, so I'm going to bring my percent of total by day, drag that onto a dashboard, and drag the scatter plot at the top. Okay, so just notice that I've actually pre built these worksheets and that the tooltips didn't just miraculously appear. Um, in its conditional format. What I'm going to do now is to use my scatter plot to filter my percent of total below. And the easiest way of doing that is by clicking on this final icon at the top to use this filter. So now if I select all of my days that were cold and comfortable, I see that Okay, there's an even distribution of sales amongst all of these sushi types, but not cold. Okay, that's great. People don't like to eat cold foods on cold days. I probably wouldn't call that an insight. So we're going to go ahead and see if there are any less obvious insights we can derive from this analysis. So on days that are cold and sticky, I'm seeing that hearty sales have decreased whilst there's an even distribution between fried and spicy. 
and when it's mild and sticky okay when it's mild and sticky and again people don't tend to go for the hearty sushi types so automatically that I'm inclined to think that people don't like hearty sushis on humid days so there could be a correlation in that respect okay so when it's mild and comfortable there seems to be an even distribution across all four categories and when it's hot but comfortable so I probably wouldn't derive any conclusions from this due to a sample bias I don't I'm uncomfortable using just two data points so through this simple filtering action we were able to observe that humidity affects sales in the hearty category I'm going to add an additional layer of checking by extracting out the amount of sushi sold for only the hearty category and whether our peaks and dips in sales, I want to immediately know what the weather was like on those days. So I'm going to show you a technique of how to represent it visually in Tableau. So here I've written a calculated field to extract out my sales for only this category. I'm going to place it on the rows shelf and then bring out another instance of the same measure, turn it into a dual axis, and synchronize the axis and change the graph type for the second marks card. So now it's quite obvious that where there are dips in sales, this is what the weather was like. It was mild and sticky and cold and sticky. And there's no reason why you can't have this in a parameter. Findings and recommendations. My findings that on humid, on days that are humid, hearty sushi sales drop. And spicy and fried sushi sales are probably not as related to external weather conditions as much as personal preference. So my recommendation would be to reduce the amount of hearty sushi rolls offered on humid days and for management to pick the 10 varieties based on a 15 day weather forecast rather than based on a static selection. Now let's go back a step and take a look at exactly what we did to blend the transactional sales data and historical weather data. I'd like to thank my colleague Raymond for helping me put together this Outrix workflow. So I've stuck, the, stuck a, a screenshot of the workflow in this slide. We basically used Outrix to connect to the weather company API owned by IBM and extracted 90 days worth of historical weather data and combined it with the sushi sales data. Then we prepped the data using the formula tool to come up with the desired output format because the weather data was initially in JSON format which prompted us to use the formula tool to convert it into a tabular format that Tableau prefers to consume. So the output was an Excel spreadsheet but alternatively what you could do is just push your data source to Tableau server. So th these are the exact coordinates, coordinates of where we source the data and the coordinates suggest Sydney Uni. So this is actually real weather data not just stuff I've made up and it's also worth mentioning that the weather company data is hyper localized and unique down to 50 meter grids. So what that essentially means is your temperature at this exact location would be different to say for example on Science Road and it's the temperature and the humidity at this location which drives the behaviour.
Weather impacts every business from aviation, insurance, retail to ground transportation. Here are some use cases of how you can leverage weather to improve on safety, efficiency and performance in transportation. Today we've talked about how to use weather data to help with demand planning with the aim of optimising a product mix and thereby reducing cost. Other extremely relevant examples include workforce management, delay avoidance and route optimisation. What examples can you think of 